Hey Ben, doesn't have to be fun. You like it pretty loose. It's not obviously a girth, it's more of a sideways. It's more of a yeah, sideways, that, sideways pull. And keeping it in the place. And then we go around to the cropper and we'll do up the cropper. Now the cropper is to help keep the harness set in the position. Like if you're going to use it on the saddle, keeps it set in the right spot. So it stops this bit of chain here slipping down sideways, keeps it simple. And then from there, you go right up to here, and there's two straps, we call them Y straps, and they're connected to the top of the collar. Now they're my favourite type of strap because when you're going out and doing farm work and you're going on a nice green field, the horses want to eat the grass. If you don't have that strap, the column will fall off. And you don't want that at all. So this strap here, all that will just tighten, it'll keep that collar in place. You can still put his head down, but it stops the collar from falling off. Now the next thing we're going to do is going to put these reins through all our rings. The last thing we'll do is bridle him up. The reason why we keep that for last is so they can see exactly where we are and what we're doing. Especially when it comes around box fly season, they get a little bit pitchy. You can tell where they are. So in the single harness we'll put it through here and then up through the collar. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and the very last thing, our bridle or winkers, or there's about a million names for them. We call them just the bridle. And we like to use the rubbers on them, but when they're in a the hand, if another horse is next to them, they get connected from bit to bit. So they'll get a lot of sideways movement, and that will just help protect them. And the way we do it, we hold them out like that. If we're not using them and we've got military elbows, has anyone seen a military elbow before? It looks very similar to a Spanish snaffle, with the rings down, but it's just more solid. And the reason why we use them as well is in team work. If one horse is pulling a lot more, your reins are connected to all of them, is that you can just drop them down that lever so you're not just pulling on every other horse as well. Yeah, it's a more of a direct contact with that one horse as opposed to, yeah. So you're not upsetting the other horse. Yeah. It's a very good <laughs> But for single and farm work, just a snaffle. <laughs> yeah. Problem with them being tall, a lot of teachers try and put their heads down. <laughs> We have some that, with some of the bridles, we just hold them out like that and they'll put their head into it. If they miss it, they'll nearly head back <laughs> around trying to look for it. Like, Wait, <laughs> now we just connect the reins. The head still. The head still. <laughs> From there, you basically just grab the reins, up when they're not too tall, and then work your way back with the bum. And you basically want to stand. When you're done, feel free to come have lunch with me. Meter or two. Away oh, do thank you. Line, just for safety. From there, you want to Let the wild beast be free. <laughs> Let the wild beast be free. <laughs> we used uh, two commands to get our horses to start. So we say stand up and walk on. The reason why we use 
the start word instead of just walk on this because if you've got multiple horses you want them to be ready to go if you just say walk on one might hear one mightn't and then they start going like that so that's an english way of driving is stand up walk on stand up walk on and we like to drive at that <laughs> If I walk over that way, I've also turned the other way. And that's the easiest way to drive these horses, especially when they're in big teams. So now we can walk to our sled, see where he turns into it, and then we say woo, and we'll stop. Now from there, we have this device here. Does anyone know what this is called? A swinger tree or an equalizer? That there helps spread the chains from one side to the other. And then when he walks through, that will actually pivot with his shoulders. If you don't use that straight up, he gets a, a thump action and will hurt his shoulders. So that will just move with it, keep it equal. You don't really want to hook one chain up and then try and get the other and he walks off because it'll pull one side. So from there, these horses, you should be able to steer off these chains. So if I pull these chains back, he should come back. Ma, I'm afraid I Yeah. And he's put them up, hooked always into the inside. So if you're going around any gates or fences, you don't pull up with anything like that. I stand on the sled. I like to stand off the sled just for a start, just because his shoulders are cold, he's not warmed up. And then I'll hop on it once it's gone. So stand up, walk on. So now, safest way, you can unhook both and then go up and hook them back up again. <laughs> From there, you also know it's reverse as well. So if we drive him into a tight spot, we can get him out. So we can reverse him if I want to walk that way, we'll go that way. Especially when you have multiple horses next to them, we like to climb up to our container at home. So when you get started, the far horse on that side has to come back and then the other horse on the other side has to go. So basically we just stand here and go come on back and then push them up at the same time. Now does anyone have want to have a go at long range them around? You do? Yeah. Oh, come over.
be the easy attack in the car, so. Yeah. And then from there, we like to sit this up to here, and then you can drag everything off like that. And surprisingly, they actually like that too. In the back, just like an itch. Yeah. And then, traditionally, all the collars, even the Australian ones, are actually designed to go over the head. The reason why, if you're always undoing it, the straw in here will actually crack and then the collar is no good, it'll actually start bending like that and it'll actually start pinching the neck. So basically all you do for that case is run it up here and then you twist it and then run it straight over like that and straight down. And vice versa to put them on. Yep. And that's how you meant to do with the collar. Yeah, it's very cool. Mm. So we uh, can hold him like that, pull him down. He's not going to do it. <laughs> but basically do that. And so he's sort of slowly ducking his head. Yeah. Because that is the same as when it comes to first Bridling. putting on their bridle. Yeah. The same thing, teaches them straight away. Put yeah. Head down. The same as adding the collar. If I add the collar over his head. Present it exactly the same. So we go like that. Puts his head Aww, in. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> and that's just teaching it from that. Yeah. And so you're working everything off the same thing. So he's about eight now. He's actually. He's the one we actually train most of our horses off. Mm -hmm. And the horses basically. So we we train even from the start of in the paddock. So when they're eating, they all eat as one. Mm -hmm. So basically if they can all eat together in a the trough, they can all work together as a team. So you're creating. They work out their dynamics in the paddock. Yeah. Yeah. And from that time, you can actually stand in the paddock and see which ones they'll actually eat next to. Yep. And that's who they'll work better next to. Yeah. Um, even we have little foals out there in the paddock eating with these guys. Yeah. Just so they get to know. And they, they push each other around, so when they're enhanced, they're doing the same thing. Everything's just working together. Mm. Yeah. Um, and if they don't get along, you sit there, you might grab a little bit of mud, and they know if you say, like, yeah. you know, it's sort of like the boss out there, and you can say, Noah, and he goes, Ooh, and he knows straight away. Just <laughs> down. So you might have to have half an hour every night, and at some He'll point. He'll stop picking on them. <laughs> <laughs> How old are they when they retire? Is it different for each horse? Uh, yeah, different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We our, our first ever fire star, he passed away at I think it's about 34. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he worked right up to then. Yeah. It actually keeps him fit. If you have a horse out in the paddock, you'll actually mm -hmm. die a lot younger yeah. than the horse that's in the world. Mm -hmm. It just keeps him so much more fit. Yeah. yeah. But it all, all depends. Yeah. It's like starting the horse and first time harness, all depends on their bone structure. Yeah. You know, some are two, some are three, some are four. Yeah. So Awesome. Good, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we just leave. We just take.